Hi, I'm going to show you how I file a square ground chainsaw chain. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Good Day Farm. Um, today I want to show you how I file a square ground chainsaw chain. Um, using a square file, not a grinder. Uh, the chain that I'll be doing today is a steel uh, RSL, very similar to the RSLK style chain. Um, from what I understand, there's just a little bit difference in the width of the cutter or something like that. But yeah, the RSL is the new, or the, the current style of a square ground chain from steel. Um, and I do this with a double bevel file and I use it, uh, I do it in a Granberg file and joint uh, file guide. Um, the double bevel guide, uh, excuse me, the double bevel file will not fit in a modern Granberg, the one uh, G106B, but it does fit in some of the vintage ones. And the one that I'll be using today that's set up on my saw behind me is a, uh, a Granberg 104. And, um, I can show you that, uh, later in the video, but it's quite a, quite a bit different than than the modern Grambergs that we're used to. Um, but it works really well for these uh, double bevel files, and uh, it uh, it'll it'll work really well for doing a uh, filing on a square ground chain. Um, a little later on, I'll talk about, in my opinion, some of the pros and cons of of running a square file chain. And uh, but for now, I just want to show you exactly how I uh, do the filing. Uh, to me, this is hand filing, even though I'm using a guide. Um, this is really helpful in getting that memory, muscle memory for when you wanna just be able to freehand it. Uh, with this setup, I can file one of these. Uh, what we have here is a, a 72 drive link, 20 inch chain, full comp, uh, really not much longer than it would take me to do it uh, with a round file. So, and I believe, in my opinion, um, the results I'm getting are, are really good, uh, really close to what you would get with a grinder. I mean, the grinder is obviously probably the best uh, for this, but for a work chain, not a race chain, but for a work chain that I use um, for around, you know, just tree falling and firewood cutting, uh, phenomenal results. So, let's just get right into it. Uh, I'll show you how I got this set up, and we'll do a couple uh, filings, and we'll go from there. Okay, so first things first, uh, I'm going to assume if you're watching this video that you're already pretty familiar with how the Granberg style bar mount filing guides or filing joints work um, as far as the different angles. If not, I do have another video uh, in my channel and in my playlist that sh explains the modern, the G108B, um, excuse me, G106B uh, filing guide, which as far as the angles go and, and how you set it up is very similar to this. So uh, that said, the main thing for the, this is going to be the angle that goes across the cutter tooth. I set it at 30 to 35 degrees, you know, just depends on, on the chain and all that. Pretty standard. That's the same that I would do for a round file around 30 degrees. The difference is going to be this angle here, which is what determines how, see how this file is really steep pointing down that's this angle now if i was doing a round file that would be set at zero or ten degrees at most um, for these for the square ground you want that angle as steep as you can possibly get it uh, i'll try and show you over here where that file is going to get almost touching the tie strap or possibly even touching it um, I like to get it towards just almost there. I don't want to cut into my tie strap, but I know some guys aren't worried about that. So to do that, you need that angle as steep as possible. I find that around 25 degrees works well for me. Um, you know, play with that on your own chain and see what works best for you. But for me, 25 seems to work really well. The critical, critical thing when you set this up is the depth or the height, I guess you should say, that the file is going to get into the cutter tooth. So if you can see there, sorry, the camera's gonna get a little shaky here. Let me try. The top edge of this file before it goes into the double bevel 
is what needs to line up to the point or corner of this tooth. And you can see I've got it lined up just about dead on. The other edge of the file is what goes into the lower part of the cutter tooth, kind of creates that step. And then down below that step, we'll talk about a little bit later, that's the gullet, and you can remove that with a standard brown file. All right, I'm gonna put you back in the tripod here and we'll take a couple passes so you can kind of see what's happening. All right, so we're all set up here. Um, you see this here, I do keep a magnifying glass handy just so I can kind of check my work every now and then just to make sure I'm really staying right on. Uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want. It works really well for me. My eyes aren't the best and I find that after doing a couple of teeth, I might be getting off of where I want to be and I don't notice it. Uh, otherwise, everything's the same except you are filing from the outside in and that's simply because this angle is so steep it would be really difficult if we were trying to file up we would you know hit the table down here um, and I find that's pretty standard with anybody that hand files these so I don't think that's a real issue we're just going to take depending on the condition of the tooth from you know your last filing shouldn't really take much more than three or four passes you want to have some good effort pulling it back into the tooth and then pushing it down. You don't need to be a brute about it, but you know you definitely want to be in control and uh, be pushing that down. That's why you'll you may hear a little bit of chatter, but as you just like with round filing, as that chatter smooths out, then more than likely you've got the tooth where you want it, and that's where we are on this. To me, that looks really good right there. That's what we're going for. See how, how that edge meets right in that corner really good. The top part of the cutter tooth is nice and flat against the top part of the file. And then I know if I was to flip the camera around to the other side, you would see the angle coming up into that cutter tooth is, is spot on. That's, that's what you're looking for when you're hand filing these. Okay, so now we've reached the part where we have to flip everything around um, to do the other side of the cutter tooth. And this is one area that's a little bit different than if you were using a round file. So, I'm just gonna rotate the saw around and then you would still loosen this part of it so you can rotate it all the way around. And then we want to go to the same angle that we were before. Tighten that all back down. Adjust this angle here now so that we can go down at the 25 degrees to match what we were doing on the other teeth. And that's basically the same thing you would do for a... Uh, a round file, right? So the difference here is because it's a double bevel, basically a flat file. Now the file's angle is the wrong way, if that makes any sense. So all you have to do is loosen your file, like you're going to change it, and you just rotate it to the other, you know, so that it's the right angle for the cutter tooth you're going on. It's an extra step compared to round filing when using this style of jig, but literally what that take me two seconds. So now I'm set up to file the tooth going this way. And that's all there is to that. Now you may find when you flip around to the other side, you may have to readjust your depth or, or, or things like that. So one thing I have found when using, even though I'm using this guide with the square file, you really need to pay attention on each tooth. And if you have to make any micro adjustments, you can. Um, I don't use the depth at all um, because I'm just taking enough passes to kind of true up. When I see this top edge of the cutter tooth, I know you're not seeing that from the camera here, but um, I'll show you in a minute. When I see that getting trued back up flush to the file, then I know that I've taken enough off. Uh, I don't want this to get in the way and prevent me from getting the cutter tooth the way I want it. Um, but the one thing I do notice is every now and then, 
my height will be off for this bevel to line up in the cutter tooth. And so don't be afraid to make those micro adjustments where on the round filing you typically don't need to. You can just keep round filing all the way around. Not sure how well it's going to show up. I'm trying to get show you the point. So if you can see, I'm trying to get the angle here. So we're looking at the underside of the cutter tooth and the side plate basically and see how there's a line there and how that comes right to the point of that tooth. That's exactly what you want. So the way that double bevel file works is, you know, we filed this edge let me find something to point with here. We filed this edge up under here, the underside, and then we filed that side plate edge at the same time. My, my camera is not wanting to stay focused on that, sorry. So that, to me, for the type of chain and for what work I'm doing, that is perfect. Now the only thing left to do on this chain is going to be knocking a little bit of that gullet out. We've got... Uh, a little bit building up there that we can cut back and then adjusting the depth gauge or at least checking them and they may or may not need adjustment but I always check them every time I file simply because especially on these square files um, you know I may take a little more off than I normally would or something like that so that's that so I didn't show um, checking the depth gauges just because this video is more about just showing how to file the square file of that tooth using the Gramberg jig, the, the, the old, the antique jig. Um, if you're not familiar with checking your depth gauges or, uh, or how to work those, um, there, there's lots of information on that also on YouTube. And uh, I'll be doing a video, hopefully in a couple of weeks, that I'll add to this playlist of sharpening videos that explain that. Um, so, but I would think if you're at this point where you're, you're interested in learning about how to do a square file chain, it, you're probably familiar with that. So if you're not, shoot me a comment about it. Um, I can explain it to you or, or if enough people are saying, hey, yeah, yeah, talk more about these depth gauges, I'll try and get that video out a little quicker. Uh, the other thing, filing out the gullet. Um, I didn't show that in this video either simply because, you know, like I said, I'm just trying to focus strictly on showing you what that tooth should look like. Um, so let's talk about the pros and cons of a square file chain. Super sharp chain, cuts really, really fast, cuts really, really well, and in my opinion, holds that edge for a very long time. I have cut multiple days on the same chain um, from square gun. Now again, I don't cut eight, 10 hours a day like a production logger does, but you know, I can, I can go out and buck up. I, I just cut over at the neighbor's place six uh, medium to small pine trees uh, about eight inches in diameter and and one large one that was about two foot across uh, That chain didn't even need to be touched up and, and that was falling and limbing and bucking those up into firewood uh, I could literally take that chain and go cut some more somewhere else without even touching it up Pretty sure I couldn't do that with a round chain. So in my opinion the square ground is it's definitely sharper it, it, It's more aggressive, but not in a bad way like dangerous the saws all over the place It's just when it hits that wood it just takes off and it cuts and chips fly um, And in my opinion, I don't have you no know, scientific data to back this up, but I feel like the saw actually works uh, Less it doesn't have to work as hard to cut as fast and as good as it would with a round chain It literally just feels like you're just going through soft wood all the time. It doesn't matter if you're cutting hardwood. It doesn't care what you're doing. And that's what I love about it. If I got a big round and I need to flip it over and noodle it so that I can pick it up and put it in my truck, square ground, I don't care. It noodles it. It cross cuts, no problem. Um, I've never ripped, really ripped with one like milling ripping, but I think it would handle that too. Uh, your round chains can't do all that because the way that you file that cutter tooth, it's for specific types of cutting. So if you want to mill, you got to change the angle. If you're going to noodle, they do all right on noodling, but they're, they're designed for cross-cutting, you know, uh, for felling and bucking. So that's a big pro to me. Um, the disadvantage is it's a, it's a little more difficult to file. So what I'm working on is what I would call a work cut, kind of like a woods port for porting your saws. You know, and every day, boost this saw up a little bit, give me a little more power, but not so extreme that it's going to blow itself up. Um, same with the chain. So I want to boost the performance of my chain and file it in such a way that I can get more, you know, it's going to be quicker, faster, 
easier on my saw, easier on my clutch, easier on my crank bearings, all these things um, without being extreme and, and only good for one cut. And I think I've found that with, with doing it this way. But like I said, you want to have a couple backups with you because here's the cons to it. So one of the cons is it is a little trickier to learn and the, 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 the initial investment equipment you may need to file it can be more expensive. If you're hand filing it, the double bevel files cost more up front, but, but I've found they last longer than a round file. I think that's a trade-off. Um, you, you, you more than likely when you're first learning will want some kind of guide. You can find these vintage. This is a G108. I've got a 104. Uh, I've got a couple vintage Grandberg jigs that, that work. You have to be real careful and look at the ends where the file goes and that determines if it'll work with one of these kind of files. So that's one of the cons. Now, if you want to get into a grinder, there's only, to the best of my knowledge, only one made today. Uh, it's a Symington. Sylvie used to make one, but they're out of business. Uh, the used Sylvie's command a lot of money. Uh, everybody loves those. They made a really nice setup. Symington, from what I've read and review, you know, reviews, is a really good grinder also. They start at a thousand bucks and even used they're going for a thousand, twelve, fifteen hundred bucks. You know, I think the con the pros way out weigh the cons. So uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, any comments, please share. Any tips or suggestions if you think I'm doing something uh, it could do something a little different, might make it easier or, or whatever. I'd love to hear it. Um, I'm just trying to share what I've learned um, in, in my limited knowledge of, of how to sharpen these kind of chains. And like I said, I didn't have anybody showing me or helping me, but what I've done uh, produces results and I'm real happy with it. So with that, you guys have a great day. Thanks again for watching the video and uh, please comment, like, share, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, I really appreciate it. So just uh, have a good day and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you now. Bye.